Discuss about the first chapter of um, Lao Zi Dao Te Jing, right? So um, the Lao Zi Dao Te Jing is divided uh, into two different portions. So I'm using the Penguin Classic. I think it's quite good, right? So um, well, nothing is better than the original text, but the original text written in uh, old. Chinese form, we call it Wen Yan Wen, which do not have like full stop, comma, you know, colon, semicolon in it. So um, the interpretation would be a bit more fluid uh, in that form. So, but anyway, um, let's start with the first chapter. The first chapter of Tao Te Ching actually established the tone of the book. What I mean by that is that, you know, uh, it's also in a certain way point to you that it's not easy to understand this this concept of the Tao. At the same time, it also, uh, in a way, is very apologetic that it's not easy to explain. So if there's any inadequacy, uh, you know, you could pardon the writer or sometimes the thought could also lie in the concept of it, right? So okay, anyway, let's go through this um, and read through the first section or chapter of Tao Te Ching. Right. right, it says that the way that can be spoken of is not the constant way. The name that can be named is not the constant name. The nameless was the beginning of heaven and earth. The name was the mother of the myriad creatures. Hence, always rid yourself of desire in order to observe its secret. But always allow yourself to have desire in order to observe its manifestation. These two are the same, but diverge in name as they issue forth. Being the same, they are called mysteries. Mysteries upon mystery. The gateway of the manifold secrets. Okay, so um, how do we interpret this, right? Like I said before, um, the way that can be spoken of is not the constant way. Meaning, whatever is said about Tao or this concept of anything, the moment you utter it, it's just a representation of the thing itself or the concept itself. So it's, it's not the concept itself, but a representation like speech communication, speech itself is representing the idea that's in my head, which I cannot communicate directly unless I have a superpower that I can just, you know, communicate through telepathy. But other than that, words itself, name itself, is just a denotation of something, a representation of something. And it's not the thing itself, therefore it's bound to be a a, a close similarity to the thing but it's not the thing itself so therefore therefore whatever is said is not the thing itself right and the name that can be spoken of is not the eternal name or constant name so we, we have to take that into consideration that speech communication has certain gap that we cannot fulfill so the, the, the eventual thing that if you can understand exactly what it is it's a very, very aha moment, you know, right? That you got it. But in order to re-communicate it again, you know, you may not be able to communicate so well, so easily. So that's that's what it means by the name that can be named is not a constant name because this thing constantly can change. You know, using different languages, for, for example, Mandarin, it means something else. You, you, you use English, it means something else. So, so, the name itself is not eternal because during different part of the history or different part of, of the time, people use different name to denote the same thing, right? And of course, the thing itself also have changed, right? So, like, um, therefore, therefore, um, they are not constant. But how do we 
understand all these things that is not constant. So what it says is that nameless was the beginning of heaven and earth. So the nameless, the concept itself without a name, is the thing itself. But how are we going to communicate it? So, and then he pointed to a way, right? The name was the mother of myriad creatures. So we have to get down to the thing that doesn't have a name. So um, in, in a certain way, if you look at Zen Buddhism, right? Sometimes they give riddle to their disciple. So the disciple have to keep on thinking, keep on meditating on, on that riddle. And finally, there would be a aha moment. Or some of them can call it enlightenment moment. So that's how you understand it exactly as it is. So it also provides a way. It says, always allow yourself to have desire in order to observe the many foes. Right? You get rid of your desire in order to see the secret. Right? So, so if you have a desire of certain things, you miss the rest of of the characteristic of a certain thing. For example, you fell in love with a girl. You are so taken over by her looks that you could not see all the flaw in her. So what it says is that, okay, now take away her look and observe her other behavior and see how it is. Because the thing that you have not seen, the thing you have not observed, also is a made up of this girl, right? Or this lady. Right, so is to have the des de your desire and understand yourself because of your desire. Therefore, what you look at is only that particular things, and then when you read off your desire, you see all the rest of the thing, and therefore you can thoroughly see all the thing you need to see. So, a lot of times we got to read ourselves of desire in order to understand what we are seeing, what we are going to understand. Right, so um, because desire blind us, right? So what it says is that um, we take, for example, a girl. So her looks is is her, her behavior is also her, her thinking, her thoughts is also her. So those are the multi facet or manifolds of this manifestation of, of of what we are seeing of this person, right? So. Um, so, with this, you could actually um, use the same to see the world and observe the world. That's why it's a mystery upon mystery. Because as every object you look at it, everything you look at it, they have many, many parts to it. So, as you unravel and unravel the parts, you can see more and more. Take, take for example, right, the idea of the smallest... Take for example the idea of the atom, right? The idea was to dissect something smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until hopefully we can arrive at the truth of the world. But of course, you know, sometimes um, we don't know where, whether they are really divisible or not or they are whole by itself, but we, we consciously cutting it up, you know. Like for example, take for example, apple is whole, right? But if you cut it up, you have half an apple and what do you see? You see the seed, you see all this... Uh, the core of the apple, you see the skin of the apple, you see the flesh of the apple. So, you think that you have seen smaller parts of the apple, but actually the apple itself is only whole, called apple, if it is seen by itself and not cut up. Because when you cut up, you see the same thing in the oranges, right? You have the skin, you have the core, the orange, you have the seed, right? So, so, when you cut it up, actually, you are seeing the mystery of things. Meaning, you, you know that if you have a fruits, you need to have the seed, you need to have a core, and you need to have some fresh, and you need a skin to protect. So all, most, I would say, most of the uh, uh, food would be, uh, fruits, fruits would appear that way, that form, right? So that is a mystery. But this mystery, slowly we can see that, you know, a seed can germinate, right? And... When the seed germinate, what happened, right? So, so by observing in that form, we can see the world in totality. And by not having desire, by not having preferences, 
by not having prejudice, we can see things clearer, right? So this is this is the starting of the first chapter of uh, Tao Te Ching, right? So this settle the tones of the book, right? It it at one end he is telling you something that is not moving, another end something can becomes manifold if you keep looking at it you keep understanding the mystery and you can see more and more of these different smaller parts which you can unravel so in a certain way some things are eternal some things are not eternal so but these two things are the same thing right eternity and this moment and non-eternity transient is the same thing it's the same makeup okay so that would be the first chapter and the next time we will look at the second chapter okay bye bye